they would find the same bounty, in the same manner they had in the first area. This narration is part of a long, hadith that M. Nasawi, Ibn Adrir and Ibn Abi Hadam recorded, about the trials. This story is similar to the story in Surah al-Araf, although the latter was revealed in Makkah. In Surah al-Araf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used a third person when he, mentioned the children of Israel to the Prophet and, narrated what he favored them with. In the Surah, Al-Baqarah, which was revealed in all, Medina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed his speech at the children of, Israel. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah al-Araf, And there gushed forth out of a twelve springs. 7160. Describing what first occurred when the water, begins to gush out. In the, ayah in Surah al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, described what happened later on, meaning when, the water burst out in full force. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. 185. 261 they said, O Musa, we cannot endure one, kind of food. So invoke your Lord for us to bring, forth for us of what the earth grows, its herbs, its, cucumber, its fum, its lentils and its onions. He said, would you exchange that which is better, for that which is lower? Go you down to any town, and you shall find what you want. And they were covered with humiliation and misery, and they drew on themselves the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was because they used to disbelieve in the, ayah, proofs, evidence, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and killed the, prophets wrongfully. That was because they disobeyed and used to, transgress the bounds, in their disobedience to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is commit crimes and sins. 186 The children of Israel preferred foods inferior to manna and, quails. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And remember my favor on you when I sent down, the manna and quails to you, a good, pure, beneficial, easily, acquired food. And remember your ungratefulness for what we granted you. Remember how you asked Musa to exchange this type of food for an inferior type that consists of vegetation, and so forth. Al Hassan al Basri said about the children of Israel. They were bored and impatient with the type of food they were provided. They also remembered the life they used to live when their diet consisted of lentils, onions, garlic, and herbs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells. They said, O Musa, we cannot endure one kind of food. So invoke your Lord for us to bring forth for us of what the earth grows, its herbs, its cucumbers, its fum, its lentils and its onions. They said, one kind of food, meaning the manna and quails, because they ate the same food day after day. The ayah mentioned lentils, onions and herbs, which are all known types of foods. As for the fum, Ibn Masud read it, fum, garlic. Also, Ibn Abi Hadam narrated that all Hassan said about the ayah is fum. Ibn Abbas said that fum means garlic. He also said that 187 The expression, Famulana means, bake for, us, according to the languages of old. Ibn Adrir commented. If this is true, then Fum is one of the words, whose pronunciations were altered, the letter Fa, was replaced by the letter, Tha, since they are, similar in sound. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Others said that Fum is wheat, the kind used for bread. Al Bakari said. Some of them said that, Fum includes all grains, or seeds that are eaten. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. He said, would you exchange that which is better for, that which is lower? Criticized the Jews for asking for inferior foods, although they were living an easy life, eating, tasty, beneficial and pure food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. Go you down to any, Mizr. Ibn Abbas said. Means, any city. 188. Ibn Adrir also reported that Abu al and ar Rabi ben, Anna said that. The ayah refers to Mizr, the Egypt of Faran. The truth is that the ayah means any city, as Ibn Abbas and other scholars stated. Therefore, the meaning of Musa's statement to the children of Israel becomes, what you are asking for is easy, for it is, available in abundance in any city that you might, enter. So since what you asked for is available in, all of the villages and cities, I will not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, provide us with it, especially when it is an inferior, type of food. This is why Musa said to them, Would you exchange that which is better for that, which is lower go you down to any town and you, shall find what you want. Since their request was the result of boredom and, arrogance and since fulfilling it was unnecessary, their request was denied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Covering the Jews in humiliation and misery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And they were covered with humiliation and misery. This ayah indicates that the children of Israel were plagued with humiliation, and that this will continue, meaning that it will never cease. They will continue to suffer humiliation at the hands of all who interact with them, along with a disgrace that they feel inwardly. Al Hassan commented. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated them, and they shall have no protector. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them under the feet of the Muslims, who appeared at a time when the Magis, Zoroastrians, were taking the jizya, tax, from the Jews. 189 Also, Abu al Alia, R. Rabi ben Anas and Asadi said, that misery used in the ayah means, poverty. Atiyah al Afi said that misery means, paying the tilth, tax. In addition, Abd al commented on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. 190 And they drew on themselves the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They deserved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger. Also, Ibn Adrir said that the ayah means they went back with the wrath. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, I intend to let you draw my sin on yourself as well as yours, 529, meaning you will end up carrying my and your mistakes instead of me. Thus, the meaning of the ayah becomes they went back carrying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath descended on them. They deserved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. That was because they used to disbelieve in the ayah, proofs, evidences, etc. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and killed the prophets, wrongfully. Means, this is what we rewarded the children of Israel with, humiliation and misery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger that descended on the children of Israel was a part of the humiliation they earned because of their defiance of the truth, disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ayah and belittling the carriers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law that is the prophets and their following. The children of Israel rejected the messengers and even killed them. Surely, there is no form of disbelief worse than disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ayah and murdering the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning a kibr. Similarly, in the hadith recorded in the two sahihs, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 191. Kibr is refusing the truth and degrading, belittling people. Imam Ahmad recorded Abdullah bin Masood saying that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, The people who will receive the most torment on the day of resurrection are a man who is killed by a prophet, or who killed a prophet, an unjust ruler, and one who mutilates the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. That was because they disobeyed and used to transgress the bounds. Mentions another reason why the children of Israel were punished in this manner, for they used to disobey and transgress the limits. Disobedience is to do what is prohibited, while transgression entails overstepping the set limits of what is allowed and what is prohibited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. 262 Verily, those who believe and those who are Jews and Christians, and Sabians, Sabian, whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day and does righteous good deeds shall have their reward with their Lord, on them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Faith and doing righteous deeds equals salvation in all times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. 192 Verily, those who believe and those who are Jews and Christians, and Sabians, Sabian, whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day and does righteous good deeds, shall have their reward with their Lord, on them shall be, no fear, nor shall they grieve. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the condition and punishment of those who defy his commands, fall into his prohibitions, and transgress set limits by committing prohibited acts, he stated that the earlier nations who were righteous and obedient received the rewards for their good deeds. This shall be the case until the day of judgment. Therefore, whoever follows the unlettered messenger and prophet shall acquire eternal happiness and shall neither fear from what will happen in the future nor become sad for what has been lost in the past. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, No doubt. Verily, the only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no fear, shall come upon them nor shall they grieve. 1062. The angels will proclaim to the dying believers, as mentioned. Verily, those who say, Our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone, and then they stand firm, on them the angels will descend at the time of their death, saying, Fear not, nor grieve but receive the glad tidings of paradise which you have been promised. 4130. The meaning of Mumin, or believer, Ali bin Abi Tal narrated from Ibn Abbas, about. Verily, those who believe and those who are Jews and Christians, and, Sabians, whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the following, I am afterwards. And whoever seeks religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted of him, and in the hereafter he will be one of the losers. 385. This statement by Ibn Abbas indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept any deed or work from anyone unless it conforms to the law of Muhammad that is, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Muhammad. Before that, every person who followed the guidance of his own prophet was on the correct path, following the correct guidance and was saved. Why the Jews were called Yahud? The Jews are the followers of Prophet Musa, who used to refer to the Torah for judgment. Yahud is a word that means, repenting, just as Musa said, we have Hudna, we repent, go back and return, unto you. 7 156. 193 Why the Christians were called Nasara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Who will be my helpers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's cause all? Hawarian said, We are the helpers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 6114. It was said that they were called Nasara because they inhabited a land called in Nazareth, Nazareth, as Qatada, Ibn Jurej and Ibn Abbas were reported to have said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Nasara is certainly plural for Nasrin. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Muhammad as the last and final prophet and messenger to all of the children of Adam, mankind was required to believe in him, obey him and refrain from what he prohibited, them. Those who do this are true believers. The Ummah of Muhammad was called Mu'min and believers because of the depth of their faith and certainty, and because they believe in all of the previous prophets in matters of the unseen. The Sabian or Sabians. There is a difference of opinion over the identity of the Sabians. Sufayan Athari said that Laith bin Abu Sulaim said that, Mujahid said that. The Sabians are between the Majus, the Jews and the Christians. They do not have a specific religion. Similar is reported from Ibn Abi Naji. Similar statements were attributed to Atta and Sayyid bin Jubair. They, others, say that. The Sabians are a sect among the people of the book, who used to read the Zabur, Psalms. Others say that, they are a people who worship the angels or the stars. 194 It appears that the closest opinion to the truth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, best, is Mujahid's statement and those who agree with him like, Wahb bin Munabi, that. The Sabians are neither Jews nor Christians nor Magis, nor polytheists. 
Rather, they did not have a specific religion that they followed and enforced, because they remained living according to their fitra, instinctual nature. This is why the idolaters used to call whoever embraced Islam a sabi, meaning that he abandoned all religions that existed on the earth. Some scholars stated that the Sabians are those who never received a message by any prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. 263 And, O children of Israel, remember, when we took your covenant and we raised above you the mount, saying, Hold fast to that which we have given you, and remember that which is therein so, that you may acquire taqwa. 264 Then after that you turned away. Had it not been for the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, indeed you would have been among the losers. 195 Taking the covenant from the Jews. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, and, O children of Israel, remember, when we took your covenant and we raised above you the mount, saying, Hold fast to that which we have given you, and, remember that which is therein so that you may acquire, taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded the children of Israel of the pledges, covenants and promises that he took from them to, believe in him alone, without a partner, and follow his, messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that when he took their pledge, from them, he raised the mountain above their heads, so that they affirmed the pledge that they gave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, abide by it with sincerity and seriousness. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, statement. And, remember, when we raised the mountain, over them as if it had been a canopy, and they, thought that it was going to fall on them. We, said, hold firmly to what we have given you, Tara, and remember that which is therein, act on its commandments, so that you may fear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey him. 7171. The mountain mentioned here is, Atur, just as it was, explained in Surah, al araf according to the Tafsir of, Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Ada, Ikrima, Al-Hasan, Ad-Dabhak, Ar-Rabi ben Anas and others. This is more obvious. There is another report from Ibn Abbas saying, the tur is a type of mountain that vegetation grows on. If no vegetation grows on it, it is not called tur. 196 And in the Hadith about the trials, Ibn Abbas said, When they, the Jews, refused to obey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised the mountain above their heads so that they would listen. al Hassan said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, Hold fast to that which we have given you, means the Torah. Mujahid said that the eye commanded, Strictly adhere to it. Abu al Aliyah and Arabi said that, and remember that which is therein, means read the Torah and implement it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. Then after that you turned away. Had it not been for the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Means, yet, after the firm pledge that you gave, you still deviated and broke your pledge. Had it not been for the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. Meaning, by forgiving you and by sending the prophets and messengers to you. 197. Indeed you would have been among the losers. Meaning, in this life and the hereafter due to their breach of the covenant. 265 And indeed you knew those amongst you who transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath that is Saturday. We said to them, Be you monkeys, despised and rejected. 266 So we made this punishment an example for those in front of it and those behind it, and a lesson for all Madokin, the pious. The Jews breached the sanctity of the Sabbath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 198 And indeed you knew those amongst you who transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath, that is, Saturday. We said to them, Be you monkeys, despised and rejected. And indeed you knew. This, ayah means, O Jews. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his torment on the village that disobeyed him and broke their pledge in their covenant to observe the sanctity of the Sabbath. They began using deceitful means to avoid honoring the Sabbath by placing nets, ropes and artificial pools of water for the purpose of fishing before the Sabbath. When the fish came in, abundance on Saturday as usual, they were caught in the ropes and nets for the rest of Saturday. During the night, the Jews collected the fish after the Sabbath ended. When they did that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed them from humans into monkeys, the animals having the form closest to humans. Their evil deeds and deceit appeared lawful on the surface, but they were in reality wicked. This is why their punishment was compatible with their crime. This story is explained in detail in Surah al araf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and asked them, O Muhammad, about the town, that was by the sea. When they transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath, that is Saturday, when their fish came to them openly on the Sabbath day, and did not come to them on the day they had no Sabbath. Thus we made a trial of them, for they used to rebel, disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 7-163 in his tafsir, al Afi reported from Ibn Abbas that he said, We said to them, Be you, monkeys, despised and rejected means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed their bodies into those of monkeys and swine. The young people turn into monkeys while the old people turn into swine. Shaybn and Nawi reported that Qatada commented on, We said to them, Be you, monkeys, despised and rejected. These people were turned into howling monkeys with tails after being men and women. 199 The monkeys and swine that exist now are not the descendants of those that were transformed. Ibn Abi Hadam recorded that Ibn Abbas said, Those who violated the sanctity of the Sabbath were turned into monkeys, then they perished without offspring. ad said that Ibn Abbas said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned them into monkeys because of their sins. They only lived on the earth for three days, for no transformed person ever lives more than three days. They did not eat, drink or have offspring. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transformed their shapes into monkeys, and he does what he wills, with whom he wills and he changes the shape of whomever he wills. 
On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the monkeys, swines and the rest of the creation in the six days of creation that he mentioned in his book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. 200. So we made this punishment an example. Means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the people of this village who violated the sanctity of the Sabbath an example via the way they were punished. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Pharaoh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seized him with punishing example for his last and first transgression. 7925. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. For those in front of it and those behind it. Meaning, for the other villages. Ibn Abbas commented, meaning, we made this village an example for the villages around it by the manner in which we punished its people. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And indeed we have destroyed towns, populations, round about you, and we have, repeatedly, shown, them, the, ayah, proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, etc. in various ways that they might return, to, the truth and believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islamic monotheism. 4627. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them an example for those who live during their time as well as a reminder for those to come by preserving their story. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 201. And a lesson for all mudokin, the pious. Meaning, a reminder. This, ayah means. The torment and punishment at this village suffered was a result of indulging in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prohibitions and their deceit. Hence, those who have taqwa should be aware of their evil behavior, so that what occurred to this village does not befall them as well. Also, Imam Abu Abdullah bin Bata reported that Abu Herrera said that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do not commit what the Jews committed, preaching what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, by resorting to the lowest types of deceit. This, Hadith has a good, jad, chain of, narration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. 267 And, remember, when Musa said to his, people, verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you that you, slaughter a cow. They said, Do you make fun of us? He said, I take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's refuge from being among all, jagalin, the ignorant or the foolish. The story of the murdered Israeli man and the cow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And, remember, when Musa said to his people, Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you that you slaughter a cow. They, said, Do you make fun of us? He said, I take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's refuge from being among all jagalin, the ignorant or the foolish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O children of Israel, remember how I blessed you with miracle of the cow that was a means for discovering the identity of the murderer when the murdered man was brought back to life. Ibn Abi Hadam reported Beta as Salmani saying, there was a man from among the children of Israel who was impotent. He had substantial wealth and only a nephew who would inherit from him. So his nephew killed him and moved 200 to his body at night, placing it at the doorstep of a certain man. The next morning, the nephew cried out for revenge, and the people took up their weapons and almost fought each other. The wise men among them said, Why would you kill each other while the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still among you? So they went to Musa and mentioned the matter to him and Musa said, Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you that you slaughter a cow. They said, Do you make fun of us? He said, I, take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's refuge from being among all jagalin, the ignorant or the foolish. Had they not disputed, it would have been sufficient for them to slaughter any cow. However, they disputed, and the matter was made more difficult for them until they ended up looking for the specific cow that they were later ordered to slaughter. They found the designated cow with a man, only, who owned that cow. He said, By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will only sell it for its skins fill of gold. So they paid the cow's fill of its skin and gold, slaughtered it and touched the dead man with a part of it. He stood up, and they asked him, Who killed you? He said, That man, and pointed to his nephew. He died again, and his nephew was not allowed to inherit him. Thereafter, whoever committed murder for the purpose of gaining inheritance was not allowed to inherit. Ibn Ajriya reported something similar to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. 203. 268 They said, Call upon your Lord for us that he may make plain to us what it is. He said, he says, verily, it is a cow neither too old, nor too young, but, it is, between the two, conditions, so do what you are commanded. 269 They said, call upon your Lord for us to make, plain to us its color. He said, he says, it is a yellow cow, bright in its, color, pleasing the beholders. 270 They said, call upon your Lord for us to make, plain to us what it is. Verily, to us all cows are alike. And surely, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, we will be guided. 271 He, Musa, said, he says, it is a cow neither, trained to till the soil nor water the fields, sound, having no blemish in it. 204, they said, now you have brought the truth. So, they slaughtered it though they were near to not, doing it. The stubbornness of the Jews regarding the cow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, the matter difficult for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the stubbornness of the children of Israel and, the many unnecessary questions they asked their messengers. This is why when they were stubborn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the decisions, difficult for them. Had they slaughtered a cow, any cow, it would have been, sufficient for them, as Ibn Abbas and Abayta have said. Instead, they made the matter difficult, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it even more difficult for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells. They said, Call upon your Lord for us that he may make, plain to us what it is. 
Meaning, what is this cow and what is its description? Musa said. He says, verily, it is a cow neither too old nor too young. Meaning, that it is neither old nor below the age, a breeding. This is the opinion of Abu al-Aliyah, Esadi, Mujahid, Ikrima, Atiyah al-Afi, Ada, al-Qurasani, W.A.H.B. ben Munabi, Abdabhuk, al-Hasan, Qurtada and Ibn Abbas. 205 But, it is, between the two conditions. 206. Abdabhuk reported that Ibn Abbas said that, it means, neither old nor young. Rather, she was, at the age when the cow is strongest and fittest. So do what you are commanded. They said, call upon your lord for us to make plain to, us its color. He said, he says, it is a yellow cow, bright in its color, pleasing the beholders. And his tafsir all off he reported from Ibn Abbas that, bright in its color, a deep yellowish white. As Sadi said, pleasing the beholder. Meaning, that it pleases those who see it. This is also the opinion of Abu al-Aliyah, Qatada, and Arabi ben Anas. Furthermore, W.A.H.B. ben Munabi said, If you look at the cow's skin, you will think that, the sun's rays radiate through its skin. The modern version of the Torah mentions that the, cow in the ayah was red, but this is an error. Or, it, might be that the cow was so yellow that it appeared, blackish or reddish in color. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. They said, call upon your Lord for us to make plain to, us what it is. Verily, to us all cows are alike. 207. This means, that since cows are plentiful, then, describe this cow for us further. And surely, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. And if you further describe it to us, we will be guided. He says, it is a cow neither trained to till the soil nor, water the fields. Meaning, it is not used in farming, or for watering, purposes. Rather, it is honorable and fair-looking. Abdur Ratzak said that Mamar said that Qatada said, that sound, having no blemish in it, means, the cow does not suffer from any defects. This is also the opinion of Abu al-Aliyah and R. Rabi. Mujahid also said that the ayah means the cow is free from defects. Further, Ada al-Qurasani said that the ayah means that its legs and body are free of physical defects. They said, now you have brought the truth. So they slaughtered it though they were near to not doing it. Abdabak said that Ibn Abbas said that the ayah means they did not want to slaughter it. This means that even after all the questions and answers about the cow's description, the Jews were still reluctant to slaughter the cow. This part of the Quran criticized the Jews for their behavior, because their only goal was to be stubborn, and this is why they nearly did not slaughter the cow. Also, Ubeda, Mujahid, W.A.H.B. ben Munabi, Abu al Alia and Abdur Rahman ben Zaid bin Aslam said, The Jews bought the cow with a large amount of money. There is a difference of opinion over this. 272 And, remember, when you killed the men and disagreed among yourselves as to the crime, but, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought forth that which you were tacked to Mun. 273 So we said, strike him, the dead man, with a piece of it, the cow. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the dead to life and shows you his ayah, proofs, evidences, etc. so that you may understand. 208 Bringing the murdered man back to life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells. And, remember, when you killed a man and disagreed, among yourselves as to the crime. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought forth that which you were tacked to Mun. Al Bakari said that, and disagreed among yourselves as to the crime, means. Disputed. This is also the tafsir of Mujahid. Ada al Qurasani and Ad Dabhik said. Disputed about this matter. Also, Ibn Ju Raj said that, and, remember, when you killed a man and disagreed, among yourselves as to the crime, means. Some of them said, you killed him, while the others said, no, you killed him. This is also the tafsir of Abdur Rahman bin Zaid, bin Aslam. Mujahid said that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought forth that which you were tacked on, means. What you were hiding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. 209. So we said, strike him, the dead man, with a piece of it, the cow. Meaning, any part of the cow will produce the miracle, if they struck the dead man with it. We were not told which part of the cow they used, as, this matter does not benefit us either in matters of life or religion. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have made it clear for us. Instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this matter vague, so this is why, we should leave it vague. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. 210. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the dead to life. Means, they struck him with it, and he came, back to life. This, ayah demonstrates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability in bringing the dead back to life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this incident proof against the Jews that the resurrection shall occur, and ended their disputing and stubbornness over the dead person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his bringing the dead back to life in five instances in Surah al-Baqarah. First Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Then we raised you up after your death. 256. He then mentioned the story about the cow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned the story of those who escaped death in their land, while they were numbering in the thousands. He also mentioned the story of the Prophet who passed by a village that was destroyed, the story of Abraham and the four birds, and the land that comes back to life after it has died. All these incidents and stories alert us to the fact that bodies shall again become whole after they were rotten. The proof of resurrection is also reiterated in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. And a sign for them is the dead land. We give it life, and we bring forth from it grains, so that they eat thereof. And we have made therein gardens of date palms and grapes, and we have caused springs of water to gush forth therein. 
so, that they may eat of the fruit thereof and their hands made it not. Will they not then give thanks? 36 33 to 35. And shows you his ayah, proofs, evidences, etc. so that, you may understand. 274 Then after that your hearts were hardened and, became a stones or even worse in hardness. And indeed, there are stones out of which rivers, gush forth, and indeed, there are them, stones, which split asunder so that water flows from them, and indeed, there are them, stones, which fall, down for fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unaware of what you do. 211 The harshness of the Jews. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticized the children of Israel because they witnessed the tremendous signs and the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including bringing the dead back to life, yet. 212. Then after that your hearts were hardened. So their hearts were like stones that never become soft. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the believers from imitating the Jews when he said, Has not the time come for the hearts of those who believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Islamic monotheism to be affected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reminder, this Quran, and that which has been revealed, of the truth, lest they become as those who receive the scripture, the Torah, and the Injil, gospel before, that is Jews and Christians, and the term was prolonged for them and so their hearts were hardened. And many of them were, Falcon, the rebellious, the disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 57-16 in his tafsir, all office said that Ibn Abbas said, When the dead man was struck with a part of the cow, he stood up and became more alive than he ever was. He was asked, Who killed you? He said, My nephews killed me. He then died again. His nephew said, After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his life away, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we did not kill him and deny the truth while they knew it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And became a stones or even worse in hardness. And by the passage of time, the hearts of the children of Israel were unlikely to accept any admonishment, even after the miracles and signs they witnessed there, hearts became harder than stones, with no hope of ever softening. Sometimes, springs and rivers burst out of stones, some stones split and water comes out of them, even if there are no springs or rivers around them, sometimes stones fall down from mountain tops out of their fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, there are stones out of which rivers gush forth, and indeed, there are them, stones, which split, asunder so that water flows from them, and indeed, there are them, stones, which fall down for fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad bin Ishaq narrated that Ibn Abbas said that, the ayah means, some stones are softer than your hearts, they, acknowledge the truth that you are being called, too. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unaware of what you do. Solid inanimate objects possess a certain degree of awareness. Some claim that the ayah mentioned the stones being, humble as a metaphor. However, R. Razi, Al Qurtubi, and other Imams said that there is no need for this explanation, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates this characteristic humbleness in stones. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 213 Truly, we did offer all amana, the trust, to the heavens and the earth, and the mountains, but they declined to bear it and were afraid of it, that is afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's torment. 3372. The seven heavens and the earth and all that is therein, glorify him. 1744. 214. And the stars and the trees both prostrate themselves, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 55-6. Have they not observed things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, how, their shadows incline? 1648. They both said, We come willingly. 4111. Had we sent down this Quran on a mountain? 5921. And. And they will say to their skins, Why do you testify, against us they will say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused us to, speak. 4121. It is recorded in the Sahih that the Prophet said, this, Mount Yud, is a mount that loves us and, that we love. Similarly, the compassion of the stump of the palm tree, for the Prophet is confirmed in authentic narrations. In Sahih Muslim it is recorded that the Prophet said, I know a stone in Makkah that used to greet me, with a salam before I was sent. I recognize, this stone now. He said about the black stone that, on the day of resurrection it will testify for those, who kiss it. There are several other texts with this meaning. The scholars of the Arabic language disagreed over the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, and, became a stones or even worse in hardness, after, agreeing that or here is not being used to reflect, doubt. Some scholars said that or here means, and. So the, meaning becomes, as hard as stones, and harder. For, instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and obey not a sinner or a disbeliever among, them. 76 24. 215. To cut off all excuses or to warn. 77 6. Some other scholars said that or here means, rather, Hence, the meaning becomes, as hard as stones. Rather, harder. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A section of them fear men as they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, even more. 477. And we sent him to a hundred thousand, people, or even more. 37 147. And. 216. And was at a distance of two bows length or, even, nearer. 53 9. Some other scholars said that this, ayah means their, hearts are only of two types, as hard as stone or harder, than stone. Further, Ibn Ajriya commented that this tafsir means, that some of their hearts are as hard as stone and some, hearts are harder than stone. Ibn Ajriya said that he favored this last tafsir, although, the others are plausible. I, Ibn Qasir, say that the last tafsir is similar to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. Their likeness is as the likeness of one who, kindled the fire. 
2.17. And then his statement. Or like a rainstorm from the sky. 2.19. It is also similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. 